Got Dale Earnhardt Jr. is joining us now, the uh, driver of the number 88 National Guard Chevrolet, and I think uh, Chase Elliott will be here shortly. We're going to go ahead and start with Dale, though. Dale, I have to go run off to a meeting, but I'm going to turn it over to my crack assistant here. Dale, talk a little bit about uh, racing here at Darlington uh, Raceway. That was so much history. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's been around a long, long time, and one of the toughest racetracks physically that we race on. <clears throat> Tough track mentally. 500 miles here is a is a really, really long race because the the tracks are quite a quite a big racetrack, and the pace uh, slows down, and you're working so hard in the corner. So just one lap around here is a lot of work, and uh, to to have to run 500 miles, it's uh, it's a pre pretty tough test of of man and machine, and um, you know this track's starting to gray up pretty good. So I'm looking forward to getting out there and practice and seeing what we got. All right, let's go right here, uh, Dale uh, Ben White with Lexington Dispatch. Have you? I know you're very busy with your Sprint Cup schedule, but have you had a chance to watch Jeffrey Earnhardt at all and see how he's doing on the racetrack? Yeah, I watch him every week uh, during the nationwide races. I think he's done some, some a couple good things with that with that team. Had a great qualifying effort at Bristol and got spun out in the first lap of the race. Um, and uh, he's had some other good situations that I've seen and where he's had some speed and practice during qualifying. And in particularly uh, in the race, uh, he's done he's done well in a few on a few occasions. So yeah, we keep an eye on him. Um, me and him are close. He lives real, real close to me. Um, supposed to come over to the house Sunday to hang out a little bit. So I mean, we we we're, we stay pretty tight. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Uh, Dale, since Chase is coming up, uh, I heard you say I believe it was post race California. Uh, after that race, there you said one thing. You said he's better than he knows he is, and then you said. Uh, I can't, something to the effect of I can't imagine anybody or anything being a better influence on him uh, than Bill is on him. Could you sort of elaborate on both those things, and especially uh, when you talked about you couldn't imagine a better influence, can you kind of tell what you see Bill doing and maybe more importantly not doing with him or to him, and maybe could you contrast that uh, your first year in Bush with your dad, the way he handled that? Yeah, I, uh, what I mean about Bill is just Bill's demeanor, his calm demeanor, and his uh, he's not excitable, and I think that helps Chase a lot. I think that's molded Chase into the in person that he is. That that's that you know Chase as Chase uh, has grown up. I think he's um, taken a lot of his father's uh, mental makeup and intuition and uh, just, you know, certain personality traits that had been, a, you know, been an, a big help to, to Bill in his racing career. So uh, just basically how calm Bill is and how much of a student to, to racing Bill was, I think that Chase really is very similar. And, um, you know, he... Uh, you know, he's just got a lot of talent. I think there's some every once in a while there's some guys that come in here that are that are they don't know how good they are. They ain't you know, they haven't they haven't competed against this type of competition before and drove uh cars this well prepared before, uh, or been in a series of this nature. So they don't really know how much they stack up against the competition, but as a outsider looking in, you can see Certain guys have more than others, and um, Chase is re really ahead of the game right now. So he uh, should continue to progress and continue to learn, and hopefully, uh, you're real quick in the next 24 to you know 24 months, he's going to turn into something pretty pretty awesome that'll that'll be a force in the sport for a while. So I really um, I'm excited about it. Uh, just to have a guy like that come in with that pedigree and um, he's got, uh, you know, real potential to be a force for a long time. So it'll be exciting. 
And one quick follow-up on how y'all got together. Chase, uh, the other day in talking with him, he felt like, as far as a connection with Rick and with you, uh, that maybe James Finch, who I know is a good friend of yours, Finch hanging out at Mobile, Pensacola, and the places where Chase raced, that Frent, Finch might have been the primary guy who connected all of y'all and, and kept telling you about Chase. Bill thinks it might have been several people. How, 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 do you, how, did, how did you and Rick find out about Chase, and was, it, was Finch the primary guy? I can't, say, I can't speak for Rick on the deal. Um, I would... Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say that Finch had some great words to say and influenced some of, some of Rick's opinions. But, uh, you know, I just kept hearing him winning races and uh, beating good competition, winning, winning races against guys that uh, were surprising, you know. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, he was doing some good work in the late models, super late models. And... Uh, you know he was he was handling himself in a real professional manner. As important as it is that he's successful on the track, it's also equally and maybe more so important that he's he's a level head off the track. That makes it so much easier to deal with him, to want to work with him, to want to help him, and to market him. Let's go with Jeff right here, then David, and then Matt, and his, well, his neighbor left. Jeff Buck from USA Today. I'm behind one of the cameras. But um, after last week, how did you? get over it um, how much time did you spend <laughs> this week uh, beating yourself up over it um, and how was the reaction on Twitter compared to what you thought it was going to be because I know that um, after Bristol you were pleasantly surprised that it wasn't as bad as you thought um, I didn't hear the bit about Bristol but um, yeah I, I guess Twitter can be a, a help in a situation like that I mean my fans certainly have my back and help you tell you to brush it off don't worry about it i mean i'm sure there's some people on there saying the opposite but uh i didn't hear i didn't see many of those or any of those but um there's a positive and a negative to everything and uh but i uh i think that um i didn't really spend a lot of time on twitter this week because we were working uh at michigan and i tried to uh we had some things to do thursday and uh I just don't, you know, Twitter's a bit of a playground, and I don't want to horse around if we're not doing good. So uh, I sort, you know, I don't want to be on there goofing off and making light of the situation because it was, a, you know, it was a frustrating mistake, and um, it was, you know, something I don't take very lightly. We were able to just be able to get back in the car and test at Michigan was a big help for me to get past it and to get focused on the next race. This is a tough event at Darlington and we, we you know we've got some decent runs here but we haven't really had anything uh you know we haven't really come here and had a had a race that we thought we lost, you know. So um this is going to be a tough place to come rebound. Uh but we're going to give it our give it our best and I'm I'm just glad to be back at the track, go ahead and get a race or two in the bank and put it behind us. Go David real quick. David Caravella, NASCAR.com. Dale, speaking of Michigan, the speeds you guys were turning this week, I mean, how realistic that we might see those during the race weekends up there where the conditions just so different, that's kind of stands on, standing on its own. Yeah, the track should slow down as it rubbers up, tighten up, uh, get slicker, the seams will get slicker. Um, so I don't think we'll see those kind of speeds. We saw That's best, that's basically what we saw in, in practice there last time. So we may see those speeds in practice, but I doubt we'll see those in the race. The race will slow down quite a bit or enough. But uh, I think we learned some things. You know, I was really happy to have an opportunity to test with Goodyear and get an opportunity to, to get on the racetrack and learn. And we did go through a, a lot of different tires and a lot of different construction and uh, the dual zone tire. We tried a couple different ones and we went through, they had about eight different sets of tires that they wanted to learn some things about, some for Michigan, some for Kansas and other places. So it was a, a productive test. And uh, even though we were cut short on the first day, uh, we were able to get a lot of information for Goodyear that I hope is going to be helpful to them. And so it was good to be a part of that. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I love, you know, returning laps at Michigan. Uh, it's a super fast racetrack, and 
you know, we weren't able to really work on the setups of the cars that much at a tire test, but I like the speed our car had compared to the guys I saw there. Let's welcome in uh, Chase Elliott. Chase is a NASCAR Next driver and driver of the number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Uh, first for you, Dale. Um, JR Motorsports has come uh, had a great start this year and uh, got picked up a big win last week at Texas with Chase behind the wheel. Uh, talk about the process. Uh, yeah, we, we feel real fortunate to have Chase in the, in the, in the program, and uh, he was going to go somewhere and be successful, and we were lucky to be able to work with him, feel fortunate to have him, and uh, be able to work with Bill. Bill's been a lot of fun to work with. He's having him spot for me a couple times. It's been a blast. That's like a added perk to the whole deal. But, um, you know, Chase has been a real pleasure. He's done a great job. He did an awesome job in Texas uh, getting the car to victory lane. That team is poised for uh, success, and, and uh, you know, I feel like that they have a uh, great opportunity to continue uh, continue that and continue winning races. So it's just very exciting time for us, for Napa. Uh, and, you know, we just got, we just got uh, to sit here and wait and keep working hard and watch it play out. So uh, it's, it's going to be a long season, and there's going to be some ups and downs, a lot of things to learn. And, you know, it's, it's not all going to be roses, but there's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely pointing in the right direction. And we just want to give Chase a great opportunity to, to progress and learn as, as well as he can in the cars we have. All right, I know we're on the clock here. Dale, I'll let you get going to your next Thanks. thing. Appreciate it. And uh, Chase, uh, big win last week in Texas. Uh, then you come here tomorrow, or yesterday, rather, and practice with, you know, at Darlington where you don't have a lot of experience. Talk about uh, the transition of the whole week. Yeah, well, obviously last week was really good for us. And um, it was great to get a victory lane with Napa on board and just kind of that whole – that whole experience was uh, was really really neat, and to you know have have that run at Texas, so I feel like was good for our whole group, and kind of we it was just good to know we we're, we were trying and we're, we're making progress. So we just got to make sure we keep trying to get a little better. That's what our competition's doing, and uh, obviously coming to Darlington's a, a different animal in itself. So just trying to uh, trying to get used to this and this racetrack, and kind of what it has to offer for the race tonight. I'm not sure, but practicing in the daytime yesterday was. Uh, was interesting, and you know, I hope we have our car where it needs to be for tonight. Let's go right there. Oh. Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. Chase, uh, four years ago, you scored a win at North Wilkesboro. Now you're getting ready to hit the track here at Darlington. How meaningful would it be to you to not only win up at North Wilkesboro, but not to win here at Darlington as well? That'd be awesome. Um, honestly, this is a – from a fan standpoint, I thought this has probably been my favorite place to watch a race uh, since I've been old enough to watch. So this is a really cool racetrack. Um, I feel like it's one that's exciting. It's always been exciting to watch, and I feel like now as the racetrack starting to wear and kind of get that feel back to it where the tires wear and it becomes such a – just it throws so many variables back into what this race is, and the asphalt's not new. So um, I don't know. I expect it to be a, an exciting race, and I hope we can just try to be around for the end of it, and just try to, um, you know, try to stay clear of the wall tonight. I think will be a will be a good goal to shoot for in itself, and uh, hope, hopefully, if we can do that, we'll be somewhere in the hunt, and just try to have an opportunity in one of those late race restarts. Go right here in the front. Ed Hinton, ESPN.com. Chase, this might be a little off the wall to others in the room, but uh, after I was talking to you the other day, your dad and Gordon Perkle uh, told me I should ask you about your days as the most conscientious dishwasher the Dawsonville pool room <laughs> ever had. Can you, can you, uh, and Gordon said, said the, the chefs all loved you, that you, you never left a dish dirty. And also, can you talk about coming in from Colorado and snowboarding, skiing, and having a great time, and then ju jumping Pretty quick there, right back into the hard work ethic of Dawsonville, Georgia, too. Yeah, well, it was, it was a lot of fun, and Gordon kind of let me work a little bit there in the pool room, so that, that was cool, too. But, uh, you know, definitely two different worlds, for sure, kind of how Colorado works and what there is to do there. Uh, Colorado is not a, um, it's not a very racing-oriented state by any means. There's a little bit of racing to do, but not, definitely not a ton. Uh uh, beyond the go-kart racing side, there's really nothing to do, and that's kind of why we moved back was because there really wasn't any other, uh, you know, options to go race out there. So uh, kind of moving back home and kind of to the heart of the short track racing world and NASCAR, I feel like, you know, it was cool to be back in that in that area of the United States, and, uh, you know, it was cool to be able to 
start racing there, you know, again, and, and kind of work our way up. Let's go right here in the front, and then we'll have enough time for Pete. Reggie Anderson from News 19 in Columbia. Chase, one of your crew members told me that yesterday was the first time you'd hit laps here at the track. What were your initial impressions, and what's it like running in a place where your your father obviously had some great success? Yeah, it's uh, well, I'm sure everybody's everybody's heard. This place is definitely not an easy task. Um, every time I came off the racetrack, I'm out of breath. I mean, it's just you got to work hard, and uh, it, it's fun. I mean, it's a just such a thrill uh, to be at this racetrack and. You run right up against the wall, and I feel like the more comfortable you can get and the closer you can get, the faster you're going to go, but eventually you're going to pay a price if you get too close. So just trying to kind of keep that balance and, and try not to get too comfortable too quick. And, uh, you know, I felt like I was a little bit conservative in practice yesterday, probably a little too much, but uh, just trying to hopefully keep our car clean throughout the day yesterday and, and hopefully do it tonight. I think that will be a, a goal and, and something good to shoot for in itself. Let's go to Pete, and we'll finish up with Chris. Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Chase, I think I read somewhere that tomorrow night you're going to be on the radio helping call uh, call the Southern 500. Is that something you think is pretty exciting? Is that something you like doing? Yeah, it is for sure. I uh, this will be the first time I've ever done that, but I'll, I've always enjoyed enjoyed that, you know. And um, you know, I think that it's going to be fun. I've never done it before, like I said, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I, I enjoy that side and. Um, you know, the, the radio stuff, I've always, I've never really disliked it. So I think it'll be fun to do and a cool opportunity with MRN and, you know, to call, you know, kind of be a part of the cup race tomorrow and hopefully learn a couple of things watching and, uh, you know, just try to have a good time with it. So I definitely think that's, that side of things is cool and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Chase, Chris, Mike, Chris, com. I know you had to set some goals for yourself at the beginning of the season. You already accomplished some of those goals by leading laps, winning races. Is there another goal that you have in mind before that you want to succeed and, and accomplish before the end of the season? Is it winning more races, rookie of the year? Is there a specific goal that you and the team now are focused on for 2014? Well, I don't think our goals change just because of what happened last weekend. I mean, I feel like from the beginning, at least for me, I knew those guys were capable of winning races as long as, long as I you know, got the job done for them and, and gave them the information that they need to, to make those cars go fast. So I think it, as long as we keep trying to build and get better and improve, um, you know, and not get content with what we're doing. I've said that a lot the past couple of weeks, but I think that's really important. And um, that's what your competition's doing. Your competition never quits. So you want to make sure you try to improve with those guys and hopefully be a step ahead of them. So we just got to make sure we keep trying to get a little bit better. I'd love to win some more races this year. I feel like we're capable of doing that. Uh, it'd be great to get Napa back, back in victory lane again. You know, definitely. Uh, obviously, I'd like to do it more, more than one more time this year. Um, I think we're capable of doing it. So we just got to make sure, like I said, we, we keep trying to improve and I keep trying to get better for these guys and do my job better, you know, each week and, um, you know, try to just put a whole race weekend together and just do that in a better form. So, um, you know, obviously when it comes down to the end of the year, I'd love to be a part of the championship, you know, uh, talk. And I feel like our team's capable of doing that. We've got to be smart. It's a, like Dale said a minute ago, it's a long season on the cup and the nationwide side. So we've got to keep that in mind. Just try to be smart. You know, if, you, if you're struggling one night and you don't have a car that's capable of winning a race, just – take what it's going to give you, you know, and I feel like it, especially at a place like Darlington and a lot of these places can bite you really quick. So just take, take what's given to you, you know, not, not try to get too aggressive at, at a certain point, especially this early in the year. It's too early to be making, to do, be doing, you know, dumb stuff like that. So just got to keep, try to keep your head, you know, where it needs to be and, and be smart about the decisions you make throughout the race and, um, you know, try to do the best job you can to control the things that you do have control of. Obviously other things you can't do much about, but uh, just try to be smart about what you can control. All right, Chase, thanks a lot, and good luck the rest of the day. All right, thank you.